This is a course about how to make poppies in three-dimensional form using cake decorating tips and the amazingness of only thick acrylic paint. Students from beginner level to advanced would find some benefits to be. Create poppies in three dimension. No drawing skills needed. See your creations preserved in a fine art painting. Give us the most unique gift. I'm Ruth Collis, sculptural painting artist. I've shown people how to make a 3D rose, pipe corals from dried palette paint, and have authored a book on using cake decorating tips to make some really fun shapes. To learn these poppies now is structured by telling how to make each part of the poppy, including where to get materials, preparing a setup for a successful flow of creation, getting the poppy shapes, and a simple drawing technique that enables arrangement and envisioning. Find how to get an artistic background done easy, what archival glue is used, and making easy fun poppy centers. Are you an artist looking to gain dimension in your art? Do you want to be creative without having to copy a picture? Do you just want to plain do something different and amaze people? Click to take this course and see how you can make a 3D poppy painting easily, and I'll see you inside. I am sculptural painting artist, Ruth Collis. Welcome to this 3D poppy course. I love texture and dimension in painting, and now I got a request from a student on how to make some poppies in 3D, so I found a way to make some super simple poppies. The way this style of painting works is not like regular painting. Here we paint on a non-stick surface, let the paint pieces dry, then peel off and arrange into the painting easy. You can certainly paint right on the canvas, but the reason you might want to try this separate drying layer method is that by taking your practice off of the canvas, it makes it easier to prevent mistakes and not ruin your background or the painting if you can arrange your shapes the way you want them and then glue them down. So the way this course is laid out shows how to make them from the very beginning of getting the paint thick, how to go through the setup, bagging the paint to get air out, and then easy ways to get the poppy, leaf, and stem shapes by using cake decorating tips. This course will help you get poppies in three dimension and make your flowers stand out great. I test a lot of what works and what doesn't, so you will be able to learn from that. The skills you will learn is to prepare paint so you get less bubbles when squeezing the paint out, create good three-dimensional poppy shapes using cake decorating tips, be able to speed up drying of the paint to handle faster, create an artistic background, and arrange and place the flowers easy. I built this course for artists looking to gain dimension in their art, those who want to be creative without having to copy a picture, beginning texture painters, cake decorators who would like their art in a permanent fine art form, and those who want to do something different and amaze people. So the next lessons following has a digital paint chart for those in the USA of where you can order more accurate colors if ordering online, where to get the thick paint, and some price comparisons, and then starting with a set of videos on preparing a setup by beginning with making practice sheets. This video explains where to get the thick paint in larger volumes and for a cheaper price. Now after this video, you click on the download link and then open up the PDF and it will show you where you need to go to get this wonderful paint. Here's a little paint comparison. For those who live in the USA, these are the current prices as of last year, February of 2015, of the two lowest paint brands that sell super high peak gel in the actual store. Liquitex sells 8 ounces for about $15.99. You may get a half off coupon from Michaels that sells this brand or buy from Michaels online at $7.99 for a reduced price but pay shipping. Now Nova Color sells 32 ounces for 
thirteen fifty. Their prices stay um, pretty much the same, whether online or buying in their small factory. Uh, shipping is added, but the quantity is a lot more for less of a price by selling factory direct. Uh, that's why they're not in a chain of craft stores. So you really do get a whole lot more for a lot less. Liquitex can be a good option for you if you just want to try it out and get something small. Um, but for the type of painting that I will show you a lot, you will need a lot of gel and volume. So this Nova Color is a good option for that, for buying in bulk and saving a lot in the long run. Welcome to this course on making fun 3D poppies out of paint. I am Ruth Collis, and in this lesson we will cover setting up your practice sheets. So what are practice sheets? These are a non-stick surface for you to squeeze paint out on that is a separate drying layer that I developed to help paint dry, then be able to place paint pieces and the best ones back in the painting in a way that's easy to arrange, minimizes mistakes, keeps the painting background from getting ruined with practice paint, and helps you stylize more shapes that you can't do when painting with the traditional wet into wet style like crossing stems over each other and have it look realistic. A cardboard insert makes it easy to move out of the way to dry and get other work done. You can use a sheet protector to peel these right off real easy. Now you'll need several sheet protectors made before you start painting. Um, that way you can just go from one to the next and not run out of um, material to paint on. And so these all-purpose kind of shears um, cuts the cardboard pretty good. Now this one here is a little too long. You're going to want to cut this off enough to leave about a quarter of an inch between the end there because paint could have a tendency to stick. So. I kind of use it upside down. It works good that way sometimes. Okay, so see the quarter inch gap here? Now there's nothing that'll stick out and stick to your paint, so try to do that on each of these. Coming up next, see how to set up these quick and inexpensive drying shelves. Welcome back! In this video you will see how to set up these quick and inexpensive drying shelves. It's handy to already have some shelves set up and prepared for just putting these away where they can be easily dried and out of the way from being accidentally damaged. It's handy for practice sheets and even your mixing palettes as well as giving you more room for the actual painting. A cheap solution can be several clean pizza boxes stacked with an open side. A whole section of these inexpensive shelves. You can make several to just store some of your practice sheets as well. When you can start getting into more painting, you can get some nice shelving like this at Michael's or have some made for you to store some of these basic palettes. But for the wet stuff, you probably don't want to ruin nice shelves with that, and so some cheap pizza boxes could work well to store drying paintings that are lightweight. But let's look at what basic palettes set up stuff that can be stored out of the way. You should have about eight shelves. I'm going to show you what you'll need for each one. One shelf should have all brand new sheet protectors. A couple shelves should have a whole bunch of your sheet protectors with cardboard inserts already in them and ready to go. The next shelf should have a bunch of cardboard, scrap board pieces that you can use to put your painting on and move it around easily. This bottom shelf I use uh, for a lot of palettes. 
And since all these are pallets, this is why I put it here. The next shelves up should have your used sheet protectors. All of your pallets that are um, peelable, that you want to use again and again. All these used ones kind of add up and when you have many of one color that you use, you use one color per palette, it kind of adds up. So you're going to need kind of a lot of these. Now I have a whole shelf just for sheet protectors without any cardboard in them and this is kind of handy to place all around under a drip painting or to catch paint and still be able to use it and peel it off. So that's what I have for just eight shelves. That's two big box shelves with eight different shelves and it already takes up the basics. When you start getting too many of these used palettes, I have a course that shows how you can take all these excess dried palette paint, paint skins, and peel and roll them into these amazing pipe coral sculptures of dimension on canvas. It helps you not waste paint, you make cool stuff, it gives you more shelf room, and makes use of the money you spent on paint to begin with, all from using up all this excess paint. Up next is preparing the pastry bags to keep air bubbles out. you're here. In this lesson you will learn a different way to prepare pastry bags to keep air bubbles out. Now before you start mixing paint and to prevent it from drying on you is a good ideal time to get your pastry bag set up. Now I'm going to suggest something a little odd or weird and that is to use a very giant pastry bag as large as you can find for even a small amount of paint. If you're even going to use this much. The reason for all of this huge bag to use is so that you can press the paint out and in doing so get rid of air bubbles and you kind of need a lot of travel room. So if you think this is wasting a bag it's not. It's actually um, really important to have all of this room to get rid of air bubbles and then you push it all the paint back to the tip. So Let's put the tip inside of the bag and show you how to set that up. What I do is squeeze the tip all the way down as far as it'll go and then squeeze it back a little bit and cut this off. You know, or a little bit more. And I try to leave about a quarter of an inch gap and you don't want to pull on this to avoid stretching it here. If this stretches it can weaken and tear here and all kinds of paint will come out. Now I do another preventative measure to keep the tip from sliding back in or paint from oozing out of the bag and I tape around. I use electrical tape Cut it off with some scissors and I put the tape on both sides, both the tip and the bag. And what you want to do is not have areas where you don't touch both sides, so I allow the tape to wrinkle just to be able to fit. See, it's wrinkling here, press down. That's what you want as long as you touch both the tip and the bag. And that's what will secure it. Now you will really love yourself later if you add a little tiny tab like that so you can pull it off easy to clean. All right and then you fold this inside out. Fold this inside out and put it inside of a, a 
paint jar or something tall and fold it down and basically what you're doing is letting the jar hold the bag for you so that way you can have two hands free you'll probably want to use one hand to hold the palette knife and the other to hold the palette so you can scrape it and put it in okay so this is one bag now I would do all your other bags, put all your other cake tips on that you need to, and get all of your bags set up before you start mixing any paint. In the next video, see how to mix the paint. Thank you for your interest in coming back to see how to mix the thick paint. To start out, take some gel and put it on a sheet protector. If you don't have any pallets built up, this is going to be your tracing sheet as well as a mixing pallet. A different one for each. Or, if you've done this before, you can build up paint skins on your palette and um, keep making mixes but get off any dirt and if you have a palette with just paint on it and not gel mixed in I would have probably avoid using that because just dried paint alone can tend to flake off into your new mix which you don't want you can tell the difference between just paint alone that is matte and dull like here and the gel mixed in the paint is shining, like here. Or if you use just a matte gel, it should be just a lot thicker than just paint alone. Or you could label them. To cover the brittle paint that has no gel in it, just add some paint with gel and don't use the palette until it dries. Or use a paintbrush to mix instead of a sharp palette knife. To keep it simple, I'm having you get Nova Color's um, smallest size of gel, which is a quart, but if you really like this stuff, like me, I'm using a huge gallon. So, take however much you think you might need. And put it on the palette, and we'll do our red mix first. Not sure how much to use ever, that's why I end up doing a little more than I need. Alright, now with the same tool, let's put our green out here. This is uh, our green stems and our green leaves. And then let's see our brown centers. You'll probably want um, one palette for each color, but I'm going to try to squeeze green and brown on the same one, which is kind of a little harder to mix, and just because there's there's uh, not that much room. Should have put a third palette knife out for the third for the third color. Watch where you're reaching, or um, you could get paint on you. Unaware. So there's one palette knife for each color. Seal the gel jar so no air gets in. And let's let's start adding some colors. Okay. This is primary red, Liquitex Basics, of course you can use any color you like. And uh, let's see, this is translucent, so I'm going to add more paint then, I should, just to make sure it's a nice opaque color. Alright, green, Nova Colors, permanent green light, 143, this is opaque. So you don't need to add that much. Okay, this is Nova Colors 101 Burnt Umber. 
This is also opaque. Don't you need to use that much. Now, before any of this skins over, mix it all. And what I've found I end up doing is mixing a little bit of all of them just to keep the paint moving. Even though it's thick, it's still acrylic and it still dries fast on you. When you get the skinning over, you run the chance of getting those, those strings that you don't want. Alright, I've got a much smaller knife here. And notice how if you share a palette, two colors, you got to kind of work to keep them separated. And then I just keep all handles hanging out. Wiggle back and forth, left, right, and then change the position like this. You can also try to swirl it. And you basically just mix this until the white disappears. Alright. Watch what you're doing with your handles. And let's mix our brown. When you add the gel, it turns the paint lighter by many shades. So, how will it dry? Exactly the shade of color that you started with. So, if you're going to do any mixes, do the mix first and then add your gel. Following, you will want to get inside tips on how to bag the paint for squeezing. Welcome back to where you will learn some inside tips on how to bag the paint for squeezing. Now to fill the bag, put your already prepared bag in a tall canister or paint jar. And then you'll probably want both hands free. One to hold your paint palette and the other to hold your palette knife as you scrape the paint and put it in the bag and you want this paint jar to kind of act as a third hand to hold it for you. Now as you put paint in the bag, um, it kind of, paint kind of folds over itself and makes these gaps of air. We want to get all of the air bubbles out so that you have some nice smooth shapes to make. So now, put this palette knife in some water so the paint is soft enough to get off later. It's also a good idea to have some shelves handy, some pizza box shelves to put your palettes in to dry and keep out of the way. Now, take the paint jar out. And pull your bag and straighten it out. And I want to show you here. See how air bubbles can build up in the paint like this as you put it in. So you want to avoid that. Now, before we squeeze all of this paint out there, it'd probably be a good idea to seal the opening off here so that you don't have paint squeezing out of the tip. So take your paint and squeeze it and press it all towards this open end here. You want a very thin layer. You want to try to get out all bubbles. And you can see some bubbles escape. See right there, you can hear it or see it. 
as you push the paint away. See, there's one there and there. And you'll see all these bubbles kind of appear as you push it. So, all of that that you see you're getting out is good because you don't want bubbles in your paint. And I think that all of this travel room here in the bag, look at that huge one, um, is a good idea to use. So by using a bigger bag um, and a small amount of paint, like this much, um, that will allow all of this room to get bubbles out. Now if you fill the bag, you know, full, there's nowhere for that paint to travel. So you kind of need a small amount in a big bag. Now I try to leave about an inch or two gap here. Don't go farther than this. Um, so you can handle the bag easy and not have paint get everywhere. So try to work it to where you can get a, a nice even line like that. Alright, now now let's squeeze all of this paint back. This is the paint that hopefully has no air in it or less air. Let's push the paint all the way back towards the tip. All right. Now let's cut off all this excess here, and we're going to want to um, seal this off with a nice band to make sure that the paint doesn't come out. So leave yourself a couple or three inches room. Cut off the excess and then take a hairband. You might get some paint on you at this point. Otherwise you have a big bunch of bag to deal with if you want to not cut it. You're going to have to wrap the band around that. But take your hairband and wrap two or three times and fold it over and twist and wrap it again until you run out of room. No paint is going to come out of the bag that way, but you might want to clean this up a little bit so you don't get paint on your hand and then in your work. So here is your nice finished bag that you will twist and you're all ready to go. All you have to do is take your lid off here when you're ready and have fun squeezing away. Here is another way to try tying off the end without getting paint on you. Twist all the paint into a nice ball here and then fold it over. And then apply your band. Now this part will be wet, but we can try taping it. Don't cut into your bag that you want to keep. Okay, and then all this wet part here, you can just tape off a little bit like that. And now you have a nice bag of paint to use and without getting paint on your hands. Coming up next, see how to get the poppy shape and get it to be curved. I appreciate you being here. 
Now, let's see how to get the poppy shape and how to make it curved. All right, now we get to have some fun here. You'll need cake decorating tip number 403 for the poppies here. Now, I would wipe this to avoid any points so that we get a nice smooth edge and keep the moon shape downward here. You don't want to do this because then you're going to have a ball shape and we want some nice curved shapes. See how these are curved upward? So that's kind of how you want to place the tip. Now, to get a nice big flower, I think those look pretty cool. I kind of extend my arm in the farthest swing. It really kind of looks like I messed up on that one. Start in the farthest swing and then rotate. You can also turn your table here and squeeze and pull back around. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Very cool. Or if you find it really hard to swing your arm around that tiny little axis here in the center, take your points get rid of them. You can try to just do small half flowers, squeeze out and then whip it around. So that's cool too. Or if you screw up like here you can do two halves. Let's do another half to put that together so we don't have to waste that paint. Get rid of your points. Alright, so here's another half shape. That looks pretty cool. If you get any lines like that, I think that's from having a, some kind of a pokey edge sticking out. If you got dried paint or something inside here, avoid that. Avoid those pokies. Okay, let's get our bag full and uh, let's try one that's wrinkly by squeezing and pushing. I don't like that edge. There we go. Well, that's kind of cool. So we run out of room. Now here's where it's important to have several of these sheet protectors with cardboard insert already set up and ready for you to go so that nothing dries on you. If you have to stop, put your lid back on here so it doesn't dry out. See, look at this already. Got stuff drying. That's why it's kind of important to do a lot of setup beforehand and it's kind of a pain, but um, you make some really cool stuff. Whoa, that turned out cool. Oh. All right, now that your sheet is full, aren't you so glad you have another sheet immediately already made? Already made for this squeezing out. I'm gonna try to get a whole one again. Maybe I can make it bigger. Turn, squeeze, oh, it's wrinkling, cool, ah. well, maybe it looks good from that standpoint, huh? Okay, get rid of our point. Uh, 
let's try it. Um, jagged. Bunch of wrinkles, like I was first thinking. Very interesting. That's a whole different flower than a poppy, I think. Well, look at that. <laughs> cool. wonder what that is. Alright, let's stick to the poppies. Decide what do you want to practice on, I guess. Let me try another one. an air bubble. Oh cool. I like them when they can turn out whole so if you need to just develop skill to get them whole that'd be cool huh? Oh neat. Nice sideways one. Oh, I like them whole. Love it. Cute little one. Well, that's turning out better. Now I might avoid turning the moon shape on its side, I think. When it makes these rolled edges later when it dries, it may not have the best desired shape. Coming up next, the painter's approach to stems and leaves. Welcome back! In this lesson, we will look at the painter's approach to stems and leaves. The green I have around number 10. You can choose whatever size you want, of course. And a rose tip, 102. Let's try this. This is a smaller one. And both of these fit on this coupler. Let's see? So you want to put the coupler in the bag now and not the tips because this helps you interchange your tips later so you don't have to rebag it. Let's kind of get this wobbly thing a little more stable so make yourself a wrinkle here so that you can stick the tape to both sides all the way around and then bring this down and you want to stick the tape to your screw top and the base here also really kind of make this dirty a little extra pain doing all this but You'll be happy when you don't have to stop in the middle of your work and fix the bag. Ugh. So, darn, this just made it a little more difficult to swap tips, but it's still better than changing the bag. So turn this inside out. Now let's twist and squeeze our stems. Now if you have cake decorating skills already, this might be easier for you, just only having to get used to a new medium and how it works differently than frosting. 
If you don't have much cake decorating experience and are more of an artist, or not at all, that's okay because you can see from my inexperience at not being a cake decorator that these are still turning out fine. You can try squeezing paint from the air, but you will have to make certain no air bubbles will cut off your string and that you don't stop squeezing out with force. If you squeeze too much now, the line can become too squiggly from being forced out too fast. So good results can happen with a little practice. Do not come back in here and try to fix that. Let it dry. Then you can take some paint and fill it in. Now let's do one of those buds. Let's see what we can do here. Squeeze big and fat and then I think I like those too much, but we can practice. Now, I don't have much left, and so we should do our leaves. All right, now we take this tip off, switch to our other tip. loose so we add this squeeze it tight come down seal off the cap squeeze now not sure how to do this or how poppy leaf even looks but we do something different here. Fat end up. Okay, kind of like those, don't know how to explain it, zigzag motion. Maybe I can cut that little flapperoo off later. In the next video, we will look at our dried poppy results. learn another secret way to speed drying up faster. It is great to have you here! Now let's take a look at our dried poppy results. And also learn another secret way to speed drying. All right, let's take a look at our results. Uh, night after drying. Now I used a smaller fan than this one right here. This is a pretty big box fan. This I get good results overnight. And it looks like a few of these are still wet. They're very soft, kind of squishy, and um, the fan I used was like 
around the yeah, one quarter of this. So um, I'm thinking I'm thinking you can get better results if you use a big fan and a strong one. You don't want it to blow away these pieces, but let's see how these turned out. All right, um, of course, that one does not look as good. That's uh, with the half moon shape turned over, and you want um, the curve upward like this, so you can get these nice curves. These look really good, where it's curved part of the way. I don't know if I like these as much being rolled like that. I think just a little curl upward looks pretty good. Let's see how this one turned out. Yeah, I don't uh, think that looks as desirable, but you know, it's up to you. These look really cool. This nice flat one. That's, that turned out to be a real pretty shape. Nice petal here. And here's our odd one. That, that looks pretty good. So, um, since these do not seem dry all the way. Yeah, see that? You can see it sticking. I'm going to show you a little trick to get it to dry faster. Even with a good, big, huge box fan. What you do is take a really thin knife and slide it under. Put it in a new spot. You know, where the nice part won't be sticking into the mess there. And just turn it over to dry. Now, before you do another one, wipe the wet paint off of your knife. Okay, that looks good again. And go under all these. Turn it over. This wants to stick. But by doing this, this cuts your drying time in half even more. By turning it over, kind of like cooking, I guess. You turn stuff over to help it finish. Wipe the wet off. Oh, let's do this fun one now. It's wanting to stick. Woo! <laughs> Very sticky. Now if you use a matte gel, it's not going to be sticky. Alright, so always make sure to place it in an area that has no goop on it. So, you can do that to the rest of these. Now let's look at our leaves. This was under the same fan. Um, but these are not as thick. Yeah, see, it's you can tell it's still a little milky white. So these need help drying too. You don't have to turn the thin ones over. It'll just take another night of drying under the fan. In the next video, see about arranging shapes and envisioning placement in the painting. lesson we will learn about the uniqueness of being able to arrange the shapes and envision placement in the painting. These are dry now, but you don't have to wait for these to dry all the way um, before you start handling them. All you have to do is let it skin over on the back side and then you just wait until it skins over enough to handle it and it can be kind of soft and mushy on the inside. Um, and then you want to pick out the ones that are appealing in their shape. And uh, it looks like I already set aside the ones I didn't care for as much. Now let's see what's 
flowers look good together. That could be an interesting shape. I think I really like the ones that are the whole ones, the whole pieces that aren't put together half and half, but um, it's good to have variety and try out things and see what you like. That's a pretty neat hole. Now, I was planning on filling in the center. You don't have to do that. Um, but I'm going to try a few. So we'll see what that looks like. I only have one of these, so I'll just set that aside. These leaves turned out pretty good. Now, for these smaller ones, Let's see how that looks, piecing these together. That's kind of cool. Could be a little one. Alright, so one, two, three, four. Pretty cool. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine flowers, basically. So, I kind of did this beforehand and got an idea of how many stems to make. So, I made nine stems for sure. These are dry now. And uh, I messed up on a few of these. But uh, a few did turn out now. I made a smaller stem also. So, this was a number 10, and this is probably 8, size 8. Alright, so now another thing I want to show you is the surface that I want to paint on. You can use a canvas, canvas board, whatever you like, but this one just appealed to me and it's a panel. And I love this particular one because it's gessoed and primed on even the sides. So it's fully complete, I don't have to do any prep work, all I get to do is create. And let's lay these out now. Get an idea for how the painting will look. So I've seen some poppy paintings that are um, pretty cool. There's just like a couple <laughs> in the picture. Or you can put all of these in. So let's try them all. I just have so many ideas I want to get out and so let me just um, make one painting. This is probably two paintings. And unless they overlap, arrange them in a shape that's appealing. That's probably a lot right there. This is probably too much. Or you can make cute little ones. It's probably a lot. A whole lot already. Oh, I have to leave room for these little buds too. You know how those bend over like that? Let's see if it'll stick. So the whole idea at this step is for placement. Just place everything into place and see how you like it. So, I really kind of like this style of painting because it's hard to not screw up your background or know where to place things. Sometimes you just don't have that image in your head. Some artists are so gifted that they can just remember every little detail or create a whole scene. And uh, 
but those of us who don't, this makes it really easy to displace things until you know where you want them. That's right, you can also um, cross over. Yeah, I'll put some put some stems crossing like that. But sometimes I'm not sure um, how I want it to look, so I'll just sit and stare at it for a little bit. I think I like them. The ones with the really, really straight stems. Those could be kind of cool. Also, because these are movable, you can stick them underneath. You know, the, the petal like that and make it look more realistic. And you can make it look whimsical or kind of however you want. Now you can do all this arranging and envisioning after you paint the background to only do it once, but if you haven't done this before, sometimes it takes putting it together a little bit to realize the next step and what color you want the background to be. If you go with my colors already done for you, then you could probably wait to arrange the pieces until after you paint the background. It is fun though to see a few shapes come together beforehand. Alright, very cool. So now what we have left are these um, leaves. If you have a little sugar up, you can cover it. So get happy with how you want that. So now that you have kind of an idea of what you like, you can take a picture. Even if you do remember how it goes, you can try different combinations and take a picture and then look at all of your pictures at the end. Let's see which ones you like best. See this is sitting a little low. So now at this point you have the choice of leaving everything where it is. If you don't want to move it again and paint all around the stem. Or you can get rid of everything and paint a scene and remember where these go. So I think I want a really bright blue beautiful sky. You see that? It's a lot. If you see poppies with a bright blue sky, those are really pretty. Those colors really stand out. Next, we will make an artistic background easy. Glad you're here! In this video, we will make an artistic background easy. Okay, I'm going to do the background. This is fluorescent blue from Liquitex. Gorgeous, gorgeous color. And let's see, Princeton Neptune, size 14. Wow, look at this rich, rich color. I'm just going to make a real sloppy background. Boy, that is bright. Let's see, I could probably make it lighter. And now I'm going to do without a palette. 
I think. Just uh, throw paint on the canvas. The canvas having depth like this on the sides makes it a little more appealing. Gallery edges. So I'm trying to just blend it in. I'm kind of it's kind of taking longer than I wanted. Um, but that dot 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 kind of impression um, leaves an impressionistic look that people kind of like. If you can make sweeping motions too, that's kind of cool. The pulsating motion is kind of calming visually. Um, and creates interest. This is bright aqua green from Liquid Tex. Pushing backwards with the brush. Where's she here? If only I had a really thick sheet of plastic. Oh, I kind of like it. All right, so at this point, to get that on here, you have to wait for this to dry. But I don't want to wait. So, one thing you can do if you don't want to wait is speed it up with a hairdryer. Coming next, we will arrange the poppy stems and leaves into final arrangement and glue them down with archival glue. Welcome back to where we will now place the final pieces in the painting. In this video, I will show you how to glue the paint pieces to the painting archivally. So now you glue these pieces on with the same gel that made them. This will make it last archivally. But you want to get all of this paint off of your hands so that as you handle these sticky paint pieces, paint doesn't come off your hands onto all your good work. So rinse and scrub this off or use some good vinyl gloves that you could just peel right off and not have to waste any time scrubbing and cleaning. To glue these on, this is a good brush. Robert Simmons White Sable Number no. 10 and a squeeze bottle with the gel in it and full. No color added. And I just start at one end, squeeze the gel out with one hand and hold the paint piece with the other. Then go to the other end, glue your flower, and you'll want a little more glue for the flower. Doing a little bit at a time like this keeps its placement as best as possible. Then, here's where you'll need that brush. After you press the stems down and when you have it where you like it, come along with the brush and wipe off the excess glue that squeezed out. This makes it look a little more natural and less like it was glued on. Now do the same to all the others. In the next video, you have the option to create some fun poppy centers that will stand out in nice three dimensions. So, see you there! Glad you're back to see how to make these fun poppy centers. In this video, I will show you how to make some good poppy center shapes and an easy way to add a large cake tip to a full bag. Here is our finished painting that's dry. And uh, pretty cool. These pieces are a little bit movable. Um, but they are stuck there. So now, if you like it like that, you can leave it or you can try what I'm going to add right here, which is the nice fuzzy brown center. And we have our nice star 
cake tip already set up here. I'm just taking the tape off now. And we can make some fun centers, but before going and ruining our whole nice new painting um, without knowing what it looks like, you could go right here to your practice sheet and practice away. I would even practice on the sheet here before using our practice flowers. So let's try squeezing the dot. That turned out huge. Wow. This is a very big tip then. Let's see. I do have a smaller one. The 2D. Or you could try, um, see this is a rounded tip, you could try this kind of a tip that's straight. So there's a few options here. You could also try this kind of a tip that has um, shorter grooves. See how these are longer? This shorter one is 6B. Let's see if we can get it smaller. How about squeezing and letting it drop, and then pulling it up quick, and that uh, kind of shrinks it a little, a little bit and makes it come to a point, and you get the 3D rays. Let's try it again. Let it drop, press to the surface, and pull up. Okay, that's working. So. You can let these dry and try to adhere them, but they're going to be a little um, gappy. You're going to see a flat edge there. So maybe I should try a smaller one then. Well, I don't want to go and make a whole new bag. Then what a pain! So <laughs> I'm going to do that. Let's see how easy that can be. Okay, I'm back to my original cake tip. I didn't like the others. I liked uh, this one. These few here that had more ridges. So you can practice with several different star tips and see what you like. So now I'm going to practice on these on the side before doing my painting. Oh, that's humongous. Damn. Ah. I wonder if you can do one pull up slowly. And that leaves less of a point. I like that. That cactus looking one. Oh, that just created a whole other scene. Yeah, that wouldn't have happened if I wasn't in here actually practicing. Let's see. Squeeze and drop. Pull up slowly. That's better. So I'm really glad for my practice. I'm running really low on paint now. Let's bring our painting down and try this. And yes, you do want it flat. Okay, here we go. That worked.
That one was weird. At least it shows a little one for him and since it's little. Okay, that's it. Coming up next, see some tips on how you can add a second green color to highlight or cover mistakes, some color outlining ideas, and adding varnish. Welcome to this video where you can learn some extra touching up things like highlighting with a second color, color outlining ideas, and adding some varnish. For the highlighting, a good color to use in this case was part of the background color. Remember we used Liquitex Bright Aqua Green? That could end up being a nice way to tie it all in together and be complimenting. It can cover mistakes, but mostly add a little more definition that also adds to the depth of the dimension. Now there's one thing that you can do to add a little sophistication to your poppy and it's not as simple. But if you want to do something a little more advanced, you can outline the edges in a dark color. And so I have black down here and I'm pressing kind of hard so that I get just a film on my finger. You know, not a big old um, brush mark or not a big old dot and look at this if you scrape it on you can get a really cool edge Ooh, look at that <laughs> that's nice that'll make it stand out Now, of course, I'm using a practice piece before trying this on the painting. And if you want to do this, you should probably do this before adding the flowers to the painting. Because once you've added it, see, it's, it's hard to, um, it'll probably be hard to not leave smudges on your background in other areas. Let's try this with a brush now. This is something you'll have to turn. Um, that way you can keep the angle pretty good. And I think it's good if you just pull black paint toward you. Here I'm pressing a little to make the edges in a certain place really thicker and thinner everywhere else. That kind of looks cool. That looks good. Ooh. So that really adds a punch. For varnish, I use Nova Colors Brush On Varnish that lasts longer, is shinier, doesn't stink like a spray varnish, and is the cheapest for the huge quart amount they give. I pour it into an easy flip top bottle like this for handling better. Now I pour a little bit onto a palette and not on the painting so that the spot doesn't dry too fast on you and then make a dry line. Avoid pouring a varnish spot right on the canvas so you don't get the dry line on your art. So using a palette for varnishing could help prevent that. And then for varnishing I use a brush that is soft and that won't leave a lot of varnish lines. Now to avoid varnish lines you put a really thin layer on. It'll go on milky white like this. If you keep going over it until it's so thin you don't see the white anymore. So if you put a whole bunch on and let it build up like this and leave it there like that it can tend to form a little film 
and bubbles and you probably wouldn't like that. It, it, it wouldn't look as good. All this is dried varnish, not wet like how it looks and no way to get rid of these bubbles. Don't have the fan on while you're doing this. You don't want it to really dry out on you while you're still applying it. Also what I do is I don't go a certain way like across or vertical. I paint in the direction of the pattern is going on here like these flowers tend to have an outward look. So I'll paint the varnish in that direction. And that tends to minimize brush lines because you're kind of hiding it. Hiding it in a little way like that. See on these if you if you paint them outward parts can kind of um, get caught in the lip like that. And so I paint from the edge inward too. Just to kind of make it look right. So that's what I mean by not just varnishing a straight line across because that looks kind of funny when you really look at it when it's dry. It looks better if you can go in the direction of the paint. Like, see here all these straight lines? You don't want to paint like that. It'll look funny. If you paint the varnish, you know, up and down like this, it tends to hide the brush strokes better and especially if you can use a thin layer. You know, where you come back over it and until the white disappears. It's going to leave a really nice sheen. Here is a varnish example of what I don't think looks as good. With these varnish lines going straight down, it can look like an invisible hailstorm when the light hits it. See streaks here and there? Or in this painting where the streaks go across, it's kind of unsettling and not as complimenting. It can be a little distracting seeing the varnish lines kind of like looking through a screen door instead of being out in the scene. So as I've done varnishing over the years, it seems fitting to just paint in the direction or the grain of the paint. In this light, you can see the slight dried brush lines, but it is very hidden because of painting the streaks along with the sky and the pattern of the leaves. Here are the dried brush lines on the poppies up close, and it is not too bad at all.